نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله الحمد لله we here today dealing with our introduction to sarf sarf 101 or morphology, I know I used to call it etymology, but it's better termed as morphology, breaking down the word to its very last compound. See how it sounds? A little irrational. Let me stop, I'll go back a little bit. Anyway, we're breaking these words down. And we started off this poem by giving you the names of all the different types of verbs. The first thing we want to deal with is deal with what are the af'al. Because we'll be talking about af'al, and so now before we go further, you know all the different types that there are as far as what we, when we mention it. If it's sahih, if it's mahmuz, you know what I'm saying? If it's mu'tal or mithal, we, we talk about that. So we started this off as recognizing no, every fi'lum that you know, sahihun, when it's letters do not show, weak letters there within, mahmuz are doubled with, it's ain and lam, same letter there with. We call that mudha'afun, when the ayn and lamun have the same sound because they have a shaddu. Then the mahmuz, of course it has a hamzun, three separate types, the fa, the ayn and lamun. Then we have lafif. Now we're at this point, we're dealing with lafif. The first part we deal with the sahih, the mudha'af, and the mahmuz. These are three types of fi'lun. Okay? Now we, having done those, we're dealing with the mu'ta. After we deal, at, at the very first top, you break down a verb into two types, sahih and mu'tal. Sahih means it's sound, it doesn't have any weak letters in it. Mu'tal means that it has weak letters in it, okay? Sahih also means it doesn't have, if you know, we're talking about a sahih salim, it means it doesn't have even a hamza in it. But those that do have a hamza, we call them mahmuz. Then those that don't have a hamza or they have mudaaf, meaning they have a shadda in it, we call it mudaaf. So those are the three types of sahih. Okay? The sahih sahih means it's sahih salim. Then you have this the mudaaf, and then we have the mahmuz. Alright? Now we're dealing with mu'tal, weak verbs, weak af'al. And weak af'al or mu'tal, you can say that for four different types of af'al. Okay? And the fourth one, Lafif, has two different types of it. So, when we talk about Mu'atel, we could mention any one of these. And if we start with the first one, it's called Mithal. What do you call it? Mithal. And a Mithal is any verb. Now, we say the verb starts off on the fa, the ain, and the lam, right? That's what we're talking about. So, a verb is considered, a fi'lun is considered Mu'atel Mithal, weak, if the Fa of the letter, fa of the word, I should say, has a wow or a ya. Yeah. Okay? For example, wa'ada. Say wa'ada. Wa'ada. Or yasara. Yasara. These two are called fi'lul mu'tal mithal. Okay? When we mention it, we say, what type of fi'lun is that? It's a fi'lul mithal. Because the fa of the verb, of the fi'lun, has a wow or a ya. Yeah. You guys understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Let me, can I go further, brother? Okay. The next type of fi'lun, we're talking about the mu'tal, is the, on the fa'ala scale, is what we call the ajwaf. Say it, ajwaf. It's from jawf, meaning center, the, the, the stomach. That's because the stomach of this fi'lun is the ain, right? This is the jawf of it. And it's called ajwaf when the ain of the fi'lun has a weak letter from the alif, a wow, or a ya. So we would say, ba'a yabi'u. Okay? Or qala yaqulu. Okay? You understand that? Or qala yaqilu. You know, we have these different words like that. So because of this, the ain of the letter, like we say, qala. Or ba'a. See, the ain of the letter has an alif here. So we call this a fi'lun ajwaf. You get it? Fi'lun ajwaf. The ain of the letter has a weak letter. A weak letter is considered an alif, a wow, or a? Yeah. yeah. If the ain of the fi'lun has that, one of those letters, it's called ajwaf. You with me, guys? Can we go, young sir? Huh? 
Do you understand it? Do you understand? Okay, let me go back. The fi'lun, ajwaf, I'm giving you the names of it. Ajwaf means center, or it doesn't mean center, it means your stomach, the insides of you. And it means the insides is hollow, okay? Now, the ain of the letter, fa'ala, is the jawf, the inside of it. When the ain of the word, I should say, when the ain of the word has an alif, a wow, or a ya in it, then we know that that fi'lun is ajwaf. For example, ba'a. Don't you see? The ba is the fa of the letter, the alif is the ain of the letter, and the ain is the lam of the letter. So since the ain of the letter has an alif, and alif is one of the three weak letters, this will be considered a fi'lun ajwaf. Do you understand? Okay. If you say qala, now you see the fa of the letter is qaf, the ain or the ajwaf of the letter is alif, and the lam of the letter is a lam, so this will become a fi'lun ajwaf because alif is one of the letters of weakness. Right? These are the weak letters when you're dealing with that. You understand? The next one is called naqis. Everybody say naqis. Naqis. It's considered naqis because at the end of it, at the end of the letter, it has a weak letter. So we have the fa'ain and lam. Say fa'ala, right? Fa so a naqis is when the lam of the word, of the fi'lun, has a weak letter. like rama. Okay? You see, the ain of the letter is meme. And the fa of the letter, of the word, is Ra, but the lamb of the word is ya. Yeah. Ya yeah is one of the weak letters. So since the lamb of the letter is <clears throat> a ya, yeah, and ya yeah is a weak letter, this is called naqis. Naqis means deficient. Because the beginning of it <clears throat> looks strong. But when you get to the end, it's deficient. It has a weak letter. Does that make sense? All right. So that is naqis. The next style, and the fourth style of mu'tal, is called lafif. Everybody say that, lafif. Lafif. Lafif means it's wrapped around something. It's spinning around that thing. Okay, lafif. Now, lafa, lifi. Right, Maimuna's lifi. She's turning around. If I say lif, it means turn around. Lifi, Maimuna. So, lafat, Maimuna. So, there are two types. Okay, there are two types of Lafif. There's Lafif Mafruq. Say it. Lafif. And there's Lafif Makroon. Now, Mafruq is from the word Faraqa. Okay? Faraqa means to be separated. Okay? Stand up, Maimuna Zainab Tal. Stand over here. Hurry up. So, these two are girls. If I stand between them, I am, I've separated them. This would be mafruq. Since I'm strong, I'm the strong letter, and these are two weak letters, okay? Get out of here. Okay, so that would be mafruq. Hold on, come here. Come here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. Now, let's say, turn around. Now, let's say I stand over here. Stand over this side. And I stand like this, okay? Now, they're makroon. They're karana. They're right next to each other, right? And I'm the strong letter right here, my two weak daughters, alhamdulillah. So now they, that type of fi'lun lafif will become makroon because they're karana, they're right next to each other. Get it, babies? You understand? So if I faraqa, if I separate the two weak letters and the strong letters in between, and every letter is strong, is a letter that doesn't have, is not an alif, a wow, or a ya. Yeah. Okay? Right? So if I stand between, if the strong letter stands between them, then it's mafruq. If the two weak letters are next to each other, at the end, the ayn and the lamb, then that letter is considered <coughs> makroon, because they're right next to each other, qarana. The word qarana is, has been Englishized to say corner. Qarana is the English word corner. They took the word Arabic and made it into Englishization, Englishized it, okay? Two connecting parts, all right? So, that's the same thing here. So, if we get a word like waqa'a, wa, ka, waqa, 
or waqa ya, right? It's really be waqa. Then we notice that wow is a weak letter in the fa of the word. And ya is a weak letter in the lam of the word. The only strong letter is the qaf, right? So this would be mafruq because the strong letter is between the two weak letters. So it's a fa'lul mu'atal lafif maqroon. Right? You with me? Now let's go to another one. If the maqroon, if it has fa, wow, yeah, fa, wa, right? Then we notice that the ain of the letter has a weak letter and the lamb of the letter has a weak letter and the strong letter is fa. This would be fa'lun mu'tal, a weak verb, right? Lafif, because it has two weak letters in it, and it's makroon, because they're karana, they're right next to each other connecting. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Those are all the different types of verbs that we have in the Arabic language with regards to names and styles. We're going to deal with the different, the, not the different names, that's the different names that we have for them. Now we're going to start dealing with naked verbs and different um, terms that we use for the, no, I can't say terms. We're going to break it down in another way after we finish this, telling you the different usages of the verbs. And each usage, verb usage, has a different meaning, okay? Not meaning, this is a name for it also, and we'll deal with that later. But... As the poem goes, then we have lafif, with ain and lamun weak, okay? We call it makroon, when split we have tafriq. So the lafif is what we know already, the, 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 is the fi'l al that has the ain and lam weak, we call that one makroon, okay? The makroon is when the ain and the lam is weak, we call it makroon. When it's split, we have tafriq, okay? Okay, we call it tafriq or mafruq. Tafriq, you can call it tafriq, meaning they're separated, okay? So that's how you remember that. We also have mu'atal. Well, all these are mu'atal, but he, for the poem he said, we also have mu'atal, weakness, a weakness in af'al. So the definition of a mu'atal is any verb, any af'al that has a weakness in it. And a weakness is defined as alif, wow, and yeah, yeah okay? The first in line, the fa. The weakness in mithal. So the first in line is if there is a weakness in the fa of the verb, right? The word is fa'ala. Then we know that this is called a mithal, like wa'ada wa yasara, right? Then we call that mithal. That's why the poem is here to help you memorize. Okay? Then he says, and when a weakened ain, the ajwaf gets the blame. So if there's a weakness in the ain of the letter, then what do we call it? Al ajwaf then ajwaf gets the blame, okay? And last, a weakened lamb, so naqis is the claim. So when it has a weakened lamb, then we call it naqis. You understand that? Yeah. So the power of the poem is you memorize, right? And you have all the information right there, and it jumps out to you. But we go over it first to study it, and then it, it makes it easy for you to memorize the poem, right? Is it making more sense now that you that went through it like that? Okay. Aqulu qawli hadha. You have any questions, bro? Now, you, now all you have to do is memorize, right? Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.